Unify decided to get into the NAS market by reusing their Unify NVR 7-bay rack mount chassis and throwing in some NAS software on it. I was very skeptical when I first saw the announcement, but now having tested the software, I'm actually really impressed with how well this works as a first-gen product, because it's better than most of the other products I see in the NAS market that are first-gen. In this video, I'm going to go over how the system works, who the target audience is and is not, and what I think of the NAS, which too long didn't watch, it's a great deal for the speed, quality, and features that you get at the $499 price tag here in 2024. Now, Unify did send me this device, but all opinions are my own. They have no editorial say in this video, and it is not sponsored by Unify at all. But this video is sponsored by Huntress. So let's get started. A seemingly normal login can be a red flag. It might not be you accessing your system, but a threat actor using stolen credentials. This is unwanted access. Huntress watches out for sneaky tactics and behaviors, like credential theft and session hijacking. With Huntress, you get their expert team monitoring your system 24-7, identifying and responding to threats early on. Protect your identity and your business from unwanted access, business email compromise, and more. Start your free trial today with Huntress Managed ITDR. Let's start with the hardware. This is a very solid 2U rack mount case with seven bays. It'll support both 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch drives. The drive sleds are toolless when using 3.5 inch drives, and Unify provides the screws needed to mount 2.5 inch ones. Also provided are some rubber feet at the bottom in case you don't want to rack mount this device. It's also worth noting this device is so quiet, having it on a desk next to you is really not an issue. The CPU is a quad core ARM Cortex A57 at 1.7 GHz with 8 gigs of memory. Cooling is provided by two fans at the back of the system, which appear to be easy to replace if there was ever a need to. For connectivity, there is a 1 gig RJ45 and a 10 gig SFP Plus port. While I know some people may prefer a RJ45 10 gig, the SFP Plus saves on both cost and wattage. Per the unified technical specs, the max power draw is 160 watt, but mine idles at about 20 watts with four SSDs and around 30 watts when in use. Power draw will of course be very dependent on the drives you choose. There is the same common display on the front which many other Unify devices have. The display status of the NAS can tell you the IP address, which makes setting up the NAS really easy. When setting the NAS up for the first time, you are given the option of connecting it to the Unify Site Manager, which will give you features such as file sharing links and remote management, but it's not required and can be run with no cloud connection at all to Unify. I would say the RAID options are basic, but adequate for most people's storage needs. I think the choice here to not give too many options is going to make it really easy for a lot of new users. Now, before I get to the dashboard, I want to talk about the software that runs this. Of course, it's Linux, and I've turned on SSH and SSH'd in, but I want to start with the UNVR Pro, which is essentially the same device. Now, the UNVR Pro runs MD-ADM RAID, so we can go tac tac detail dev md 3 and we can show the RAID status of this. So it's Linux RAID under the hood. And if we go over here to the UNAS Pro and do the same command, it is the same rate. This is actually why Ubiquiti is able to get this done in a relatively short time. They've already done the engineering on the UNVR Pro, so it's the same engineering, but then what did they add on top to manage the snapshots? And to show how that works, you type in btrfs file system show. And for those of you that are familiar, yes, this is ButterFS. Now, ButterFS has had a bad reputation for natively handling drives, but that's why they didn't do that here. The Linux RAID handles the drive, ButterFS sits on top of it. This makes snapshotting really simple and gives you those advantages that ButterFS has. Without the risk that comes with ButterFS natively handling the drives, feel free to Google and dive deeper into that. Now here's what the dashboard looks like when you first log in and right there's those snapshot settings. And you can see the limitations and settings for the snapshots. You can click on them and easily do it. You have the schedule options of daily, weekly, monthly, at or between these times, and you can even do certain hourly ones. So there are some advanced things you can do with it, but it doesn't give you really fine grain control. It does have the option to delete them all. Now I didn't see immediately where you reverted the snapshots, but they put it in a relatively simple place. So if we go over here to the files themselves where you can see them through a web view, we can go here and there's all of our snapshots, current version, or we can go back to what it looked like. I did a snapshot before putting anything here. So this one's blank. This one has all the data in there, and this is the current version. You can also go back to any of these and restore them or download them to put them back into current version. 
I think this is a relatively simple way to handle it. Something of note, and they talked about this being a possible future update. I'm not able to manage the other users, such as user two here. I can't manage their snapshots. It is managed by each user. So even though I am the super admin, I am not able to go back in and modify something for one of these other users. Now the users can log in via the unified drive, which does have a connecting app that you can run in Windows. It's not needed, but it's cool to have on there. And it makes it so they can manage their own but it would be nice and maybe they'll do this in the future where you can handle it when you're setting it up for other users and you need to roll it back and don't need to tell them how to go to a web menu. Now you can manage, and we'll go here to where it says NFS testing. I don't have anything in here at the moment, but yes, you can do snapshots on the other shares. You can create plenty of other shares on here, including NFS. Going to services lets you see all of the shares. We have first web access. We can access it locally or through the unified dashboard. Then we have SMB, which I have turned on. I've got a couple shares on here. I do really enjoy that they put these copy paste options on here. And by the way, the copy paste option for Mac, the SMB colon slash slash forwards works perfectly fine in Linux as well. So I do have this connected via SMB to my Linux system. And for Windows, the backslash backslash works perfectly fine as well. DNS options could be set up that went beyond the scope of this particular video, but that's something I believe shouldn't be a problem setting up. I'll get to that more in a moment. Uh, Time Machine, which I did not spend any time testing because I don't really do much in the Mac world. And then NFS, which I believe was not available at the time of launch, but is available here on November 18th of 2024. And you can do restrictions by IP address to those NFS shares. And I did set this up as a storage target for virtualization, and it seemed to work. I was actually pretty happy with it. I didn't do a lot of performance testing simply because I don't have high performance drives in here, but I did do some testing of booting Linux VMs and using a storage target, as I said, and it worked perfectly fine with no errors. Now, while the system does have local user management, I thought this was great that out of the box, they have Entra ID, Active Directory, Google, LDAP, LDAP, and Jump Cloud support. So yes, you can run this completely local. You can run this without the Unify Cloud, but if you want UID integration, that works as does several other enterprise integrations here. So this has a pretty solid business use case. I also like that they identify credentials, auto send when user has an email. This was really easy to set up when you're building users. It'll send them their credentials. You don't have to set a password. They go through the process and set it up. Overall, I found this relatively easy to manage. Now, jumping over here to backups, there are several different backup options on here. I can select the data to back up. So let's back up this. Then I can choose either a remote UNAS, which I only have one, so there are not any in the list here. I can choose CIFS SMB server, which I've got that set up already, or I can choose Google Drive. There may be a time where they add more in the future, but this is what's available right now here today. And then you can set the schedule. Now I have one set up as a daily backup, and I'm just backing it up to a, another server with a CIFS share. So pretty standard and pretty easy to do. Something of note when you're doing it this way, it simply just copies all the files over to that. There's not any versioning that I could see in here. Maybe once again, that'll be something at a future date, but you select the destination folder and it just has a copy of all the files. It's not doing anything special on there. And I didn't see any option to encrypt when it lands on there. Now, coming back over here to the file manager, I really like that this is a web file manager that works, of course, one and the same with your standards window shares. But I want to point out that when we look at something like this NFS testing, we can go over here, click the gear icon and choose who has permission. We can add users, set them as owner, editor, viewer. So we have basic permission controls. But if you're looking for something more advanced, for example, if I wanted to say permissions that are nested underneath, I didn't see any options for that. I only have options for this folder I created to rename, duplicate, copy, share, or move to trash. I can create share links, which is actually something I want to jump back over to. You can't give anyone access to the files that are in your only you folder. So my user drive where user two is, I can't access user two and user two can't access my drive, but we can access this NFS testing and it's easy to add a share by simply new share. And it says shouldn't contain a space. So I'm glad it keeps me from doing dumb. And once again, I can just hit add and I can then change the permissions on it. But if you want to share a file and we'll just double click my name here, I think this is actually awesome that they built this in. So if I wanted to say, hey, let's share this particular video with someone, I can go ahead and create a share link. 
I can set the access limit. I only want someone to access it once, twice, three times, etc. I can require a password. I can set an expiration for this share link, and then I can create and copy the link. This is automatically handled by Unify, where once I do this, it's going to build that link, it's copied a link. I can do a QR code, download the QR code to send it. And I can even go back and add a password later if I wanted to. I think this is a really killer feature being built right in. A lot of users ask for this because a lot of times you have something on your NAS and you'd like to be able to share it. And with the Unify Cloud, you're not opening any ports. It's going to go ahead and take care of that for you and bridging con that connection. This is definitely something I think is going to be very popular. Now, something else worth noting, once you've created these shares, they can be completely managed or deleted. So I can go here and delete these shares, delete the links. I also like that when you're in the file manager, you're able to preview the different files. So if I go here and I wanted to double click this, it will actually play this file for me. That definitely is a bonus that I can go through and view those files, preview them. And a lot of different file types are supported. Now, something else I want to mention, even though I set it up at the beginning, just using basic protection, if I wanted to switch it to higher protection, I can hit apply changes but it will warn me that all data will be erased. So you can reset this up without resetting the whole system. But if you have data on there and you're changing the RAID type, this will cause obviously you to lose all the data on there and you'll have to put data back. So do be careful before you just hit the word reformat. I do like that it gives a warning. Something else, yes, you can do RAID expansion. It's very automated. If I drop another drive in, it automatically wants to start adding that drive and expanding it. It will not question whether or not you have HDDs or SDDs. By the way, it says HDD, but there's not any HDDs in here. It will switch to SSD when I put an SSD in. It'll also let me put HDD. So that is probably not a great idea to mix and match solid states along with spinning drives in there because that would probably be some weird performance issues. Now, thus far, this review has been very positive, as you can tell, of the Unify NAS. And I do think it's a great device, but let's narrow down if it's for you. From the ease of use standpoint of not having a lot of choices and having a really simple interface and an easy setup and not having to really wonder what RAID settings and painfully go over that. Yeah, that is definitely probably a more popular use case for the majority of people, especially people looking to buy this. Having Entra ID, Active Directory, Google LDAP, et cetera, right out of the box for integration for business, that's awesome. And a lot of people are just looking for a simple, easy to manage, easy to set up NAS. And when you drop a drive in, as I mentioned, it just auto expands because that's what a lot of people using a NAS kind of expect, not to have to go through several menus and making sure versions are correct and making sure things like line up essentially. So I think for that audience, it's a great device. I don't see any reason it won't be reliable. Unify has had a great track record with this hardware, not having a high number of failures. So yeah, I think it's a good in that use case device. Where it's going to come up short is with the tinkerers who go, I would love to run Plex on this and everything else, but it seems to be lacking an application menu or Docker, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think that's the target audience Unify was going for. That $499 price tag does come with some limitations. It does not have a ton of memory. It does not have a really fast processor in there to do, well, maybe some of the things you want to do in different Docker containers. And maybe you want GPU pass-through because you have some transcoding needs because you think it should be a good media store storage device. And while it is good as a media storage, it just isn't going to offload that for running the apps. But hey, having NFS connectivity and SMB connectivity does give you the option for that. And at the low wattage, I think it's actually a pretty good fit for a lot of people's home lab. And especially if your home lab is just like, I need a place to store everything. I think that is a good use case. So choose wisely in terms of this. Don't expect it to do a lot more. And at that $499 price tag, I can't even point you to a pile of hardware outside of the used market that would cost that little be rack mounted and do all the things that this does. So it's a good combination, I think, of software and hardware. But of course, the really tinker enthusiast is going to go, well, I wish it had all these other features. Now, I imagine there's going to be some software updates that always keep enhancing this. But as it ships right now, I think it's a good buy. One thing I would really like to see, and this is possible because everything running Linux is running SMB for the shares. You can, and I've never done this with ButterFS, but this is a popular implementation with ZFS. You can present inside of Windows shadow copies that are actually the snapshots. And if that feature comes along, hey, Unify, if I uh, see that feature, I definitely might do another video mentioning that it exists. So 
awesome if it does. And if there's somewhere I just missed a box and need to check a box to enable it, also let me know in the comments down below. Or if you're watching in the future, remind me that that feature may have shown up at some time because, hey, I might not notice it in one of the updates, but it'd be really cool. Overall, let me know what you think of this device. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Hit me up in the forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com. Also, there's an affiliate link down below for Unify if you want to purchase any equipment from there. It does help out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. And uh, connect with me over at lawrencesystems.com and whatever socials you find me on there. Thanks.